Hi, I'm Mark with the WD Purple product team. I'm joined today by Louie from LTS. Thank you for joining us, hey. Louie. So Louie, uh, you are a product expert for LTS products. You're also a field sales engineer, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a sales engineer for LTS. So yeah. We kind of go out, talk about a lot of the products with customers, kind of troubleshooting, draw some plans, you know, do a lot of that stuff. So you can see all the real world, what works and what needs to be tweaked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because as far as products, different products are required for different areas. So it's not like a one product works for the whole US. So it, this is a lot of um, planning that's involved for getting it to work. Right. <laughs> You're the perfect person to have on today to talk about the LTS solar powered camera. So the LTS solar powered camera is designed to be installed in locations that don't have pre-existing electrical power or internet connectivity. Yes, that is true. So normally if you were trying to do any type of video surveillance, you would need to have at least power, you need to have at least data as far as like internet network connection. Uh, with the actual solar camera, none of that is needed. You don't need to find a power source to power up the camera. Uh, because since we don't also have a network connection, everything is being beamed over one way or another, which in this case for this camera, it's going to be a, um, a carrier-based solution. So like your cell data uh, plan, in this case, we're using a 4G. So 4G, you know, you would be beaming the signal back, or if you're wanting to something that's a little bit more, uh, more of like a, uh, like a wireless solution, without needing to go through a carrier, then we can actually do a point-to-point. -point. But point-to-point, -point, you would actually need to have somewhere that's within a three mile range, line of sight, that's able to receive the signal. And so, yeah, two different ways to actually get that feature. Great, well, let's dive a little deeper into the product. So starting off, who is this product for? Who are the customers and what kind of locations are they installing this camera into? From what we've seen lately, a lot of them are going to be construction sites. So construction sites being that like a home builders or any place that's doing that type of work. As they usually will have supplies like wood, lumber, um, electrical stuff. A lot, of them, a lot of times those are getting stolen. And so they really are in the building process. They don't have those utilities. So your power, your network, they don't got that. And so that's why this solution works for them. They're able to kind of move it around. It's more mobile. They can put it anywhere they want because at the end of the day, they're moving the supply from one area to the other, depending on where they're building everything. And so that's why it comes in handy in that situation. And so remote sites, they don't necessarily have physical security on site 24 by seven. They don't necessarily have power or internet con connectivity. Mm -hmm. And that's where the LTS solar power camera comes in. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times they will have like a security guard, but hey, if the security guard's in one area, then who's looking at the other area? So with this camera, they can have multiple cameras securing different areas at the same time. All right. And what were the options for those types of customers? What could they do before? Or did they have to run power or, or internet? Yes, usually they will need to at least run power because these are all electronic devices. So if you're not getting that form of power to power that device up, then there's really no way to get it to run the camera. There's no way to get it to run the actual modem that's beaming the signal back. And so, yeah, those are at least the most basic type of uh, utilities that are gonna be needed. All right, so let's talk about the operation of the camera with solar power. So. Is it, does it only work during sunlight, daylight hours? No, not necessarily. It will run 24 hours a day because yes, you do have a solar panel that is charging up um, and powering the battery. It is powering up the camera. So during the daytime, it is able to absorb and get enough power to charge at least the battery and run the load, which is the camera itself. Uh, it's also going to be running the 4G modem or if you're running a point-to-point -point bridge, it is running that to beam your signals back. So it is a kind of like an all-in-one solution where once you have that whole kit, you're good to go. Um, Under normal operating conditions, how long does that battery work for? There are different modes for the camera itself. We've got a more of like a standby mode, which is more like a manual mode. You can turn on the camera and have it start sending the signal whenever it needs to. Uh, we also have more of a proactive mode is what they call it where the camera will automatically detect, oh, there's someone in the area. That's when it clicks on, starts sending the signal over. 
there's also a pool performance mode where it's running 24 hours a day. And using that solar panel and using that battery, it is able to run it through whatever mode that you want. The only difference is different modes will require different amounts of power. And so that's going to probably be the only limitation you can say. Great. And is the solar panel adjustable? So I imagine the, the sun is on different paths or at different times of the year. Can you move mm -hmm. the panel to attract the sun? Yes, yes. So if you're looking at a solar panel, you can adjust the angle. Uh, and also you can adjust it if we're wanting to kind of put it a little bit more left, a little more right. You can always do that. Uh, but according, you know, we're in the North America, so we're in the Northern Hemisphere. You're usually going to be pointing the panel south at a roughly 45 degree angle. So that's going to be the best way to go because Yes, the sun is moving from east to west, but you just keep it in your southern position. And while the sun is traveling from one way to the other, it's still able to grab it. You really don't need to move it during the day. So if you're a security professional an installer or an operator, you don't necessarily have to become a solar powered <laughs> engineer to be able to no, the gear. No. Yeah, I just said it once and forget it. Yeah. All right. All right, well, let's talk a little bit more about the optic system with the, the camera. Is the camera a low power camera or is it a full featured high resolution camera? I would say it was more of a high resolution because that is running 4K image, so it's an 8 megapixel image. Um, and also, you are going to be uh, getting the 24 7 color cameras. So it doesn't matter if it's at nighttime during the day, you are going to be getting uh, full color. All right, tell me a little bit more about that LTS implementation with the color system. Mm, on that one, the cameras itself, since they are full color, they have a larger physical image sensor inside. And with that larger image sensor, you're able to absorb more light. More light gives you a better uh, color resolution or color gradient in your image. Great, so it has great low light performance as well, or changing light conditions, so perfect for sites like uh, construction sites that don't have are well lit. Yes, right? yes, because you can run, the camera itself does have a physical white light, which shines down pretty much like a floodlight. If it's not needed, it's not going to turn on, but if it's super dark, it's pitch black, then yes, you can revert to using that white light to turn it on. Okay. We mentioned network connectivity, um, so let's talk a little bit more about that. So it's a cellular and 4G implementation? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's cellular base. So the modem itself on the camera is a 4G. Uh, if you look out on the market now, they do have 4G or 5G for a lot of the carriers. But, you know, 5G, the, yes, the speed is supposed to be faster, but it is kind of spotty. So with this camera, yes, we are running 4G. It's not the latest and greatest, but if we're looking about the amount of data the camera needs to send, it's not going to be maxing out the 4G connection at all. And 4G is going to give you a more stable connection since it is... Um, not brand new, like, you know, your 5G connections. Right, right. Well, as an operator of the camera, um, am I, what am I doing when I'm connecting to the camera? Am I playing back video? Am I adjusting the camera settings? Or how am I interacting with it? You can do all of the above. So there is an app that you can use, either on a computer or on a phone, mobile device. And on that device, yes, you can pull up the live view. So what is the camera seeing at that moment? Uh, you can go in there and change the settings, change the settings like the different type of modes, or you can play with like the detection types. Uh, so all of that is available. You can also go in there and do playback. So if you need to search for footage that has been recorded, you can do that. You can download that footage if you need it for like evidence or whatever. So any of those options. Right, so no truck rolls, no climbing a ladder up to a solar location. <laughs> no, no, definitely yeah. not. If that was the case, I'd be a pain in the butt. <laughs> you know, oh, I need a footage. Oh, let me grab my ladder and climb up his camera and get it. Now. That, no, that those are old school, old fashioned. You don't need to do that anymore. All right, sounds good. So, what about international locations? If I'm a multinational company and a construction company, for example, and I start a project here in North America. Have another project going overseas can it be uh, operated in different markets oh yeah definitely uh if you look at the spec sheet for our camera it'll give a listing of the frequencies that are supported for that 4g modem that's built into the camera itself so yeah at the end of the day just take those frequencies go up to your carrier hey are these frequencies supported um usually they will at least support all if not half of it depending on the carrier itself so if it is, you know, then you should be good to go. 
But of course that is going for if you're using the carrier based type of data transmission. If you're trying to do a point to point using the bridge, uh, wireless beaming the signal back and forth, then you won't have any issues no matter what. Great, great. And you mentioned the app. Uh, is there a charge for using the app or is it all included? The app is included. So there's no charge or anything. You don't even charge for you know downloading data or anything from your camera. Because at the end of the day, that stuff is already on the camera. It's recorded on the camera. We're not needing to rely on any type of cloud recording. There's no monthly charge for that. So you mentioned recording onto the camera. So let's talk about the storage. So what are the storage options for this camera? On the camera itself, it does have 64 gigs of built-in storage. Uh, 50 gigs of that is going to be available for recording use. As you know, we've got that. Once you format it, of course, it's going to be a little bit less. Then you have like the system data settings and everything. So 50 gigs is going to be available for recording use. And you can supplement that by pumping in a SD card, a micro SD card. Okay. And uh, which different qualified micro SD cards are included on this product? Mm, the SD card is going to be separate. So, but we would recommend getting anything that's endurance grade or, you know, your Western Digital Purple since those are made for recording 24 hours a day. So that's going to give you the best life out of that uh, storage. Yeah, so you mentioned endurance grade. Is there a difference between video surveillance grade, endurance grade and a, a retail endurance grade that a videographer might use? Mm, they are going to be optimized differently. Um, so usually your, your, your surveillance grade, that is optimized as far as power. For recording 24 hours a day, you're going to have you know the good read and write cycles for recording that much. I would say you know your videographer grade would probably be you're able to do max uh, high speed to keep up with your uh, video that they would use on their cameras. Uh, so you mentioned WD Purple. WD Purple micro SD cards are rated for 24 by 7 operation. And they're also built with uh, what we call video surveillance grade endurance. And so that's high levels of endurance uh, for the card that goes you know, often cases well beyond what you can get from a, a retail grade camera. Um, so WD Purple is, is designed for ultimate reliability for video surveillance applications. So why did uh, LTS select WD as a partner for this uh, solar camera? Uh, so a lot of our customers, yeah, they've been starting off, you know, with any type of SD card that they can find because they think, hey, SD cards are SD cards. But what they soon find out is that, oh, it looks like they dropped the connection or the SD card gone bad and they lost all their footage when they're really needing it the most. And so that's why LTS, you know, we recommend going with Western Digital, uh, their purple line of SD cards, because those are made for your high read and write cycles. They're just dependable, reliable. Um, we haven't had any issues with that since, and our customers have been happy with those Western Digital products. That's great to hear. Well, Louie, thank you so much for telling us all about the LTS solar powered camera today that features WD Purple micro SD card storage. So thank you. Thanks for having me, Mike.